will not miss a thing you came here for. The Lord doesn't have to have Ruth here in person to give you what, she, what he has for you through Ruth. Because she'll be praying for us, and the Lord will use her to minister through her. And in addition to all that, this Olivia Henry is just one of the most tremendous people I know in the whole world. She's pastor of a church in Philadelphia. She has a worldwide ministry. Uh, she, she's not a neophyte in things of, of the Spirit. Uh, she really walks with Jesus in the kingdom. I've been with her in CFOs. I've been with her in schools of pastoral care. I've been with her just uh, praying together, talking together, shouting together. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you're in for a thrill uh, with Olivia Henry. So uh, it's not a matter of Ruth not being here. It's just a matter of uh, both being here and Ruth by the Spirit. And I know that we, all of us will just be aware of this and be blessing Ruth and Henry. Not in terms of anxiety or just pulling on them, you know, uh, but in terms of accepting them, th their presence and ministering to them. And, and we'll all have a wonderful time together. For the sake of all of us, I'd like just to have a little bit of orientation tonight and uh, not keep you up too late. If I see any of you sleeping, I'll uh, yell in a loud voice. <laughs> but uh, CFO is a commitment to community. That's really what it's all about. It is a community experience. Now, community means various elements, learning to live together in one, as one. That's what a community is all about. Many various elements being so related in harmony that discord turns to concord, and all of the diverse elements, instead of contradicting one another, complement one another, and God makes out of the many one. Uh, that's what CFO is about. Uh, it is a marriage or a community of heaven and earth. We are committed that heaven is to come to earth, and earth is to be lifted to heaven. Uh, that the thing uh, that's missing in heaven is earth, and the thing that's missing in earth is heaven. Uh, so we're committed to bring the two together, not to run off and leave either one of them. Uh, and so it, since that's true, we're, we're seeing heaven in all of earth and seeing all of this earth caught up into heaven. Regardless of how earthly you are or how earthy you are, enough heaven to solve your problems. And regardless of how heavenly you may be, enough earth uh, will bring you down where you ought to be. <laughs> so, uh, so we're committed to the marriage of heaven and earth. That's why we have such a diverse program at a camp. We have great talks, outstanding preaching. <laughs> We have wonderful, uh, wonderful singing, all of that. Tremendous praying, as we all know. But we have golfing. Uh, some of you fellows may not have been on the golf. Even you ladies play golf. Uh, you may not have been on the golf. One of the most fabulous golf courses in the world. Right? Just in a stone throw up here. Tennis courts. Or trails to walk in. All the rest. We'll have all of that. Uh, we have uh, what we call the creative periods, uh, devotion in motion. Uh, I was down in uh, Cochabamba, Bolivia in June of this year, or May it was, and uh, with a retreat sponsored by the, the Dominican Order, the Catholic Church. Mostly priests and nuns from all over Bolivia and parts of Peru came. So we turned it into a little CFO. 
we didn't have anyone to lead devotion in motion. So I did it. <laughs> after, after the first day, one of the sisters came and said, uh, Tommy, don't you want me to do it? <laughs> so some of the sisters wore their habits. Uh, a lot of them have kicked the habit. <laughs> Uh, but some of them had their habits, and that you should have seen these sisters, <laughs> you know, uh, with their habits, uh, having motion in devotion. I mean, devotion in motion. All, uh, and and we'll, we'll be having that here. Now, some of us fellows, you know, really, the first time I came to CFO and I saw these crazy people, you know, acting like a bunch of children. Uh, I wouldn't do it for a while. <laughs> you know, I stood off. I just wouldn't participate in devotion and motion. But finally, they kept loving me, not forcing me to it. And incidentally, that's true here. You're, you're not under any rules. You, you, you're not going to be forced to do anything. You're going to be drawn. Just, just the love of the Lord drawing you. And that's what happened. They began to draw me. And so I began to enter into it, and I looked around. I wish nobody there would ever know me, you know, and I, and I was so glad not many of them did. And I started participating in most. Remember one of the songs, Marsha Brown was leading And it was pretty simple, you know. There, there's a wideness in God's mercy, like the wideness of the sea. I got out that far. <laughs> <laughs> But before the week was out, I'd forgotten what anybody thought, <laughs> you know, what I might look like. I was just having a good time. And a lot of you fellows who've never been to CFO, uh, you might have the same experience. Well, don't be afraid. Just plunge in, because we'll look as foolish as you feel, <laughs> and you'll get over it. And you'll discover through this something happening within you. Uh, Truman Mason is here. Truman was uh, chairman, uh, has been chairman of the Michigan camp. Uh, and they have such an outstanding camp there in Michigan that meets uh, every July at Alma College. And last summer, uh, during the motion in devotion, uh, we had, I keep saying that, devotion in motion, we had a tremendous healing to take, just a miracle of healing. Uh, all of us had been praying and nothing had happened through praying. But uh, while we were just having rhythms one morning, this person was healed. And oh, it set us all on fire. Great things happen when we just begin to give ourselves to let community develop. Uh, then we'll have you know, uh, the other creative periods of uh, art and speech, and, uh, maybe creative music. I don't know what all of the, you will hear more about that tomorrow. But in these creatives, it's not a matter of intimidating anyone. Uh, fellas, I've got a secret for you. You know, I, I have the most beautiful voice in the world when I'm alone in the shower. <laughs> you know, and I believe I, that I can transplant that to CFO. I can have a beautiful voice in CFO. Or I can really paint at CFO. It's just hard to say no at CFO, you know. And in these creatives, you'll find something happening to you. Uh, coming out as a poem, uh, coming out in finger painting, uh, coming out in song, coming out in creative silence, something happening. Well, really what it is, community developing. And you'll find that instead of just looking out here and trying to have community, you're experiencing community. Because these many diverse elements on the inside of you, and who among us is not a strange mixture? You're such a mixture of mess that looks like a mess until you get it rightly related. But as you begin to live in love, these diverse elements on the inside begin to fall into place. And you can almost hear your spirit clicking through. 
uh, day by day and the tension breaking away and something happening on the inside. And after two or three days, this whole experience here will just move in behind here and it'll be glory to glory to glory. That's what CFO is about. And then, of course, the heart of the camp is prayer. Every after, I, I take it the prayer service, I mean, the prayer groups are in the afternoon. I have really looked at the schedule. Okay, is that right? Every afternoon, we'll have an hour of sitting in small groups, praying. Now, here again, nobody's going to embarrass you. Nobody's going to make you pray loud. Nobody's going to make you raise your hands and stamp your foot and say hallelujah. But if you're led to do that, you can. And nobody's going to criticize you for it. You're going to be free to, you know, say nothing. You're going to be free to say anything. You're going to be free to pray as you're led. And to be prayed for. And not just praying in general ways. You know the purpose of prayer is to get a prayer answered. That's the reason we pray. Is to get prayer answered. And that's what happens in our prayer group. We're not just sitting around acting religious. We're not trying to prove anything or impress anybody. We're entering into power as we sit together and discovering what Jesus meant when he said, where two of you agree as touching any one thing on earth, it'll be done. And so as you sit in your prayer group, agreeing in the spirit, you'll find your prayers being answered other people's prayers being answered, and things that you never dreamed coming to the surface and being made manifest and you becoming a new creation. This happens, and it's happening now and will increasingly happen. CFO is a, com is a commitment to community, but it, and community is as a matter of diverse elements becoming complementary. Well, now, all of this happens on the inside. You are a community. And as you begin to experience this oneness taking place within you, strange and wonderful things happen. You'll discover what a wonderful person you are. A wonderful person in the Lord. Not because of anything you've done or haven't done, but because of what you are in Him. Tied up within you are fathomless depths a possibility just waiting to be made manifest by the Spirit of God. And the Word of God says, if the same Spirit that has raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, by that same Spirit, He'll give resurrected power to your mortal bodies. And when resurrected power begins to be infused in your mortal body, Something happens. Not just a matter of physical healing, though it involves that. But all of this potential starts coming up. I met a minister's wife a few years ago. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't in this area of the country, so uh, none of you need, need, need to start trying to guess. <laughs> uh, beyond the Mississippi. <laughs> uh, so that's vague enough. But I met a minister's wife a few years ago. Uh, that really, the minister was a lot like I am. He was so full of ego and domineering. And his wife was so dedicated and self-giving that he had just about overshadowed her to such a degree that she saw no reason for living. I was in their home for a whole week, and she just sort of stayed in the corner and was uh, tried to be no, a nobody. And uh, finally, through encouragement, she came to a CFO. And you could just see her step by step through this CFO, getting involved. And the Holy Spirit uh, beginning to work within her. Long toward the end of the camp, she just came into to a tremendous infusion and baptism with the Holy Spirit. And uh, the, the things that began to happen in this girl, she discovered that God had given a great talent for writing. 
and she was ashamed to, to let people know it because she didn't think it was good. But she had faith in me. She knew I wouldn't laugh at her. And she would send me her poems. I have, I guess, a, a, a stack of papers that high of poems this girl uh, wrote and sent to me. Beautiful poetry. So sensitive. And just revealing her own soul as the Holy Spirit brought her out. And then God began to let her set this to music. And uh, so she uh, at, at, at women's meetings in the church, uh, when she'd be called on to have a devotional, she'd sing one of her poems. And then the Lord did another miracle. He opened her husband's eyes. And when preachers' eyes get open to their wives, uh, that's quite something, isn't it? <laughs> I'm looking at a preacher friend over here. <laughs> uh, when, uh, when, I, when the preachers began to realize what a jewel God's given him. And so the husband began to encourage his wife. And then last year I received a book from her. A book of poems published. And her husband had it done. Then just a few weeks ago, I had a letter from him saying, pray for us. Uh, my wife and I are having a spiritual life conference together. Uh, now, you know, uh, it's amazing what happens. <laughs> As you begin to give yourself, you'll discover tied up within you are possibilities, potentials that you never dreamed were there. You are somebody. I mean, you are. Uh, of course I am. <laughs> but you are. Uh, and to begin to discover this, that God has put all this within me, and he can begin to draw all of this out and let me again learn to dream dreams and enter into the creative processes of life and begin to express myself in ways that I never thought possible. This happens at CFO. Now, as this happens to you, you'll discover something. That as you really realize your own value, other people will too. It's, it'll be kind of difficult for people to realize how valuable you are if you don't catch on. Because until you catch on, you'll keep hiding. You'll keep hiding. Every time I try to get close to you, if you don't know what a jewel you are, you're afraid I'll see something about you that's not right, and you'll hide from it, and you'll pretend around me. But when you realize what a jewel you are, you'll come up, hey, Tommy, shine me a little. <laughs> you know? you know? And you begin to come out in the open and let yourself be known. And that's what I need. I need to know you. I need that. I, I've got something else for you. You need to know me. Not just hear a bunch of words I say. Uh, what I say is important, but I'm much more important than what I say. And you are too. We, we are a, a, a community committed to one another. And so at CFO, no one judges another person. It's not a matter whether you agree with me or not. That's beside the point. The, the real thing is, are you willing to love me like I am? <laughs> uh, that's the real thing. Uh, am I really willing to love you like you are? Only God can do that. <laughs> and that's what it's all about. We realize that as we really accept ourselves and are willing for the Lord to give us to one another, we discover that God in the midst of us has taken us off probation and is giving us to one another. And as he gives us to one another in love, we realize that just as on the level of the incarnation, in this man, Jesus Christ, there was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. We discover that in the light of the resurrection, the fullness of the resurrected Lord is in his body, the church. And we actually experience the church. We experience the fullness of the resurrected Lord in the midst of his children. 
Not just out here somewhere, but in you, in me. Christ in you is my hope of glory. Christ in me is your hope of glory. And as we discover Jesus in one another, as he gives us to one another, then this wonderful miracle of the resurrected life is manifested in our midst. And we discover real community, which is God's holy family. Now, you know, God, it seems to me that he just loves surprises. He's constantly surprising all of us. And you know what? I, the thing that is, always surprises me in every camp, have, have you sort of looked one another over? You know? You, you've already, you know, figured, well, that person can't say much to me. You know, I wonder what that person's doing here. I'll have to tell this story because uh, it's so wonderful for me. Uh, George Hales is a great friend of mine. George lives in Oklahoma City. And he knows I tell this story, and he says I can. I don't tell stories if people don't know about it. But I, I, I went to Canuga, uh 1952 or 3, I've forgotten, for my first camp. And I went just to be with Rufus Mosley. I, I knew and loved Brother Rufus, and I'd done some work for him and had done some research at Duke uh, on some books. Well, this little book, The Reverse Side of the Cross, I, I did the study in the martyrs for that, and it was a real enriching experience. But anyway, I went to help him to finish up that book. And I didn't care anything about CFO. I, you know, it was just another group of kooky people. <laughs> uh, and Rufus ran with all kinds of kooks. <laughs> you know? And I, I was pretty orthodox Methodist pastor. And so uh, we got to this camp, and we were in the dining room right where we were tonight, the first time. And I saw this fellow sitting at the table, uh, just over from me. And at that time, I didn't realize how rich I was. And I had a poverty complex. I don't have one anymore, because my father, you know, owns the universe. And I've just about overcome poverty complex. But I had a deep poverty complex at that time, and I looked across the dining room, and I saw this fellow. I didn't know who he was. And he had a little mustache, and it was clipped just right. Yeah. And I looked him over, and I, I saw that uh, that suit he was wearing wasn't a fire sale job. <laughs> and uh, that tie was just perfect. And he had a diamond stick pin in the tie that would knock your eyes out. And I thought to myself, what in the world is a man like that doing at a prayer retreat of all things? And as I asked the question, an answer came that I thought was logical and right. And I know what happened. His wife drug him here. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that one out real quick. And so I didn't say anything to anyone. And uh, the next afternoon, well, I went to the prayer group, they assigned me like everyone else. And as uh, I got to the group and was waiting there to see what would happen, in this fellow came. By this time, he'd taken off his coat. He had a beautiful sports shirt and a, a lovely pair of slacks and alligator skin shoes. It, it was just the latest word in, in style. And uh, he came in rather casually. I started talking about prayer. And I thought, the audacity. This camp's just a day old, and he's picked up a few phrases, and now he's got to show us how much he knows. <laughs> and I, I, I was riding him off, uh, waiting for the leader to get there, whoever the leader was going to be. And in a few minutes, he finished talking. He said, uh, is there anyone in this group that needs prayer? And there was a lady sitting across in the circle, uh, said, yes, I need prayer. What's wrong with you? I have rheumatoid arthritis. He took a chair and put it in the middle of the circle. He said, can you walk in this chair? And she said, not, a, not alone. I can with help. So some of them came over and helped her sit in the chair. 
This fellow looked right straight at me and said, will you come and lay hands on her with me? <laughs> and I'll do anything once. <laughs> and so I thought, all right, I'll do it. So we went over to lay hands together on this woman. And the minute our hands touched, it was like several hundred volts of electricity. And we both began to laugh. <laughs> I opened my eyes, and he had his open. And we looked into one another, another's eyes, laughing. Stood there just in great rapture. And the woman got up and walked away healed. <laughs> George Hale has ended up being one of the best friends I've ever had in this world. And when I first met him, I thought he'd never have anything to offer me. You maybe have already experienced that here. You're going to hear in for a surprise. <laughs> uh, really. Because the Lord is going to show you how great he is. And that as you trust him, he can pick his own minister for you. And God's choice is just right. Leave the choice to him. And you'll discover that God will just surprise you as to who will mean most to you before this camp is over. Now, one other thing I'd like to say about this orientation, and it's this. Stay, stay, stay alert. Keep your ears open. Not just in the talk, not just in the schedule program, but as you sit around the dining room table, pay attention. The Lord's in that too. As you uh, go to your room and get to know your roommate, pay attention. And you'll discover that in the little casual ways, heaven is just breaking out in all this earth around us. And without us striving, without anybody trying to do anything or prove anything, just being together and letting go and letting God have his wonderful way that Jesus is in our midst. And as we just respond to him through one another by his spirit, that we will experience wholeness in mind, in spirit, and in body. CFO is a commitment to community. That means diverse elements, peculiar elements. That's you. <laughs> uh, anybody unlike me is peculiar. Uh, so a community means diverse elements, peculiar elements, being taken and wedded together, heaven and earth becoming one and unfolding in divine fulfillment. Let's just look to him for a moment in silence. You keep your eyes open or closed as you like. Accepting the mystery of God's grace that is our inheritance through Jesus our Lord. Accepting the mystery of his grace that's in that person beside you. And if you think it wouldn't offend them, just to acknowledge your appreciation of them being here, you might just like to reach out and take their hand. 